Now that we've seen some of the initial results of the MacBook Air running on Apple Silicon, we can start to compare this device with other devices on the market, like the Surface Pro X. You see, I reviewed the Surface Pro X just a couple weeks ago, and I found that while it is an impressive device, it still feels like a beta test and still has a long way to go to prove Windows 10 on ARM. You see, that's the big similarity here. Both of these devices run ARM-based processors. So I fittingly am going to call this video ARM Wrestling. If you haven't already checked out my unboxing and first impressions of the MacBook Air, know that I am a Windows fan and a lifelong Windows user. So I will have some bias during this comparison, but I'll try and make that as clear as possible. And a full review of the MacBook Air will be coming soon, so be sure to get subscribed to see that. Without any further ado, let's get started. Let's start with the display. Both of these displays are absolutely wonderful. The MacBook Air has a 2560 by 1660 13.3 inch display, which is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It maxes out at about 400 nits of brightness, and while it is glossy, it doesn't have a lot of issues with glare. The Surface Pro X, on the other hand, has a 13 inch 2880 by 1920 resolution display, and it is a more square aspect ratio at 3 by 2 as opposed to the 16 by 10. Now, it does also get brighter at 450 nits, but I don't really notice a big difference between the resolution and brightness between these two displays. I will say that the Surface Pro X is a little bit glossier, so it does have more issues with glare, at least in my use, and it does have a touchscreen, which can get some fingerprints on it, but ultimately adds a lot of value depending on who you are. Now, while I do like having the little bit of extra screen space on the 13.3 inch display on the MacBook Air, I will say I prefer touchscreens, and I would take the Surface Pro X display over the MacBook Air's display. Now, the design of these two devices is where they really start to differ. The Surface Pro X and the Surface Pro line has defined the way that two-in-ones have looked over the last decade, whereas the MacBook Air has defined the way that clamshell laptops look. Now, these are very different devices in practice, but both sport very premium designs. I will say that the MacBook Air's design is generally more sturdy, and therefore it feels more cohesive and sits in your lap easier, but I am a little disappointed that Apple hasn't brought nearly as many colors as they have on their new iPhones to the MacBook Air line, and I would love to see that in new devices. The Surface Pro X is very pretty in its own right, and I do appreciate the design, but I will say that the Mac Black color does attract fingerprints a lot more, and I will say that the design visually is a little bit more busy than the MacBook Air and a little less symmetrical. The keyboards on both of these devices is, are actually incredibly comfortable to type on and offer great travel and feedback. I'm so glad that Apple has escaped what was the terrible butterfly keyboard and has gone back to scissor switches. Now granted, I'm still getting used to the layout of the keyboard on the MacBook Air and I'm not really used to Apple devices. So as a result, I'm still very frustrated that there's not a dedicated delete key and backspace key like there are on Windows devices. Now, frankly, I do prefer the keyboards on, on Surface devices because I'm more familiar with the travel and the feel of the keys bouncing. But I, do, I will say that the instability of the Surface Pro X's keyboard relative to the MacBook Air is a little inconvenient. So I really think that these two keyboards are a toss up. The trackpads on both devices are excellent. Now, obviously the MacBook Air's trackpad is a lot larger than that on the Surface Pro X, but I didn't find myself really missing out on all that size when I switched back to the Surface Pro X because I don't find myself moving around the trackpad too largely. Maybe that's something that I'll get used to as I get used to using Mac OS. I still think that both gesture controls are absolutely fine. I'm still getting used to the 3D touch or the force touch functionality on the MacBook Air's touchpad. And I found despite offering some benefits, more often I accidentally trigger it. And so I might be better off just turning it off. But I will say that both of these trackpads are both smooth and have great acceleration and make it really easy to point on click and stuff. Obviously, the clicking feeling of the, the Force Touch trackpad feels a little bit better for me. If I had a choice, I'd obviously choose the MacBook Air, but I don't think I'm really missing out with the Surface Pro X. So let's talk about application support. Obviously, Apple set a very high bar when they said that the new Apple Silicon in the MacBook Air would support 64-bit applications through translation. And that's one thing that, that us Surface fans have been waiting on for a long time and likely will be for at least a couple more months. 
I did say incorrectly in my unboxing that the MacBook Air would be supporting 32-bit applications, but this is not true since macOS no longer supports 32-bit. Thank you Save Phase for correcting me there. Now whether the support for 64-bit or 32-bit applications matters for you, it depends on what sort of applications you will be using. For my own use, I typically use Office products and some Adobe Creative Cloud products, which the former is supported on the Surface Pro X and the latter is not. As I mentioned in my Surface Pro X review, there were a couple instances where the lack of 64-bit support actually made my experience quite a bit worse. But for the most part, browsing 32-bit emulated apps was fine. Using the MacBook Air, on the other hand, feels like you're browsing a real computer. I didn't find myself being severely hamstrung by the fact that this had an ARM-based chip, since usually the translation layer wasn't very present for me. And so the only instance that I really noticed a difference is when I opened an x86-based application and it took a few extra seconds to actually load. Now technically, the MacBook Air also supports iPad and iOS-based applications, but frankly, most of the applications that I was looking for didn't show up on the App Store. And so even if you could find the application you're looking for, chances are that app doesn't really function very well because the experience of emulating a touch with a trackpad doesn't really work very well as far as I've seen. Now, unfortunately for me, Microsoft Office products are severely hamstrung and limited on macOS as compared to Windows devices. And this has nothing to do with Apple Silicon or the fact that this is an ARM-based processor. It is purely because Microsoft refuses to create feature parity between Microsoft Office products when it running on Windows and that on macOS. Now, for many people, this might not be a big deal because they've either learned how to use or gotten comfortable with um, Microsoft Office products on macOS, or they've moved to another Office suite. But for me, this is a big issue, and I would greatly prefer using the 32-bit version of Office on a Surface Pro X over the 64-bit version of Office on macOS. That leads us into performance. Now, in terms of daily use, I didn't have any problems with the Surface Pro X for the most part. I found that web browsing and social media and emails and stuff like that was perfectly quick on the Surface Pro X, which is respectable considering it does have an ARM-based chip. And obviously the same goes for the new MacBook Air. Frankly, for many people who only use their device for relatively basic tasks, they shouldn't really distinguish these two devices too greatly, and the performance should be relatively similar. Where you really start to see a gap or maybe even a canyon is when you start to use these devices for higher level projects that are more difficult or more resource intensive, like photo editing or video editing or 3D modeling or high-end development. See, these devices will show a difference then. The Surface Pro X doesn't seem to be made for that sort of processing. And so while you might eventually be able to do some photo editing on it, once Adobe supports uh, Photoshop on ARM, I don't think you should typically use this device to edit 4K video. And that's because it's a thin and light device. And most thin and light devices, including other Surface Pros with Intel chips, generally aren't perfect for kind of more resource intensive or tasking work. But you see, that's where it gets interesting because the MacBook Air is also a thin and light device. It largely defines many thin and light devices. And yet it can still do those higher level resource intensive things. You see, typically I use a pretty beefy desktop computer for editing my videos. And so I didn't really expect the MacBook Air to perform similarly to it. But then I, I dropped a few videos on it, dropped them in a timeline and started editing and, and scrubbing between them. And it was really impressive how smoothly it worked. Now I'll go into full detail of my experience in the full review, but I can say that that sort of performance and that sort of video editing could not be done on the Surface Pro X as it is today. So while the Surface Pro X is quick, compact, and thin, a thin and light, so is the MacBook Air. And the MacBook Air is capable of massively more things because it punches way above its weight class. Now I find it kind of ironic that Windows 10 on ARM on the Surface Pro X was significantly more stable and less buggy than Big Sur on the MacBook Air. Yes, this is a very new device, and yes, several of the bugs were fixed during the few weeks that I've had it, but still, I have so many issues on this device, such that it's crashing daily, there are several applications that are not opening properly, and there are a lot of bugs that 
I don't know whether they're a problem with Big Sur or they're a problem with this MacBook Air. And so when I get to the review, I will see how many of them I can fix by just software updates alone and uh, simple troubleshooting. But I can say that if I absolutely needed something done tomorrow, then I'd be more confident in the Surface Pro X getting it done than the MacBook Air, as long as the performance is good enough on the Surface Pro X. Now this point might change as soon as tomorrow, so I'll be sure to update y'all with my experience with the MacBook Air. Hopefully it will get better and better and more stable. Now before we wrap up, I'd like to address a point that many reviewers and commenters have made about the new Apple Silicon and the new MacBook Air. And that's people saying that now Windows and their partners, or Microsoft and their partners, should be shaking in their boots because obviously no one should, should buy a Windows laptop now because MacBooks are so much better. But I think this is really taking a very multifaceted decision and simplifying it down to a very simple metric in price to performance. Now, while the MacBook Air has significantly better price to performance than any MacBook before it and many Windows, if not all Windows laptops, generally people have more reasons to choose a laptop, one laptop over another. And I can tell you in my own experience that the reason why I consistently choose Windows laptops over MacBooks is not necessarily because of price to performance, but because it offers choice. Whether it be Dell, HP, Lenovo, or the Microsoft Surface line, you always have a choice, be it what the form factor is, or whether you have a touchscreen, or whether you have a detachable keyboard, or how many ports you have. There's always more and more options. And I've always appreciated that over having one thin and light device or maybe two thin and light devices that I can choose from. Obviously for many people, touchscreen still matters since they've been integrated in a large number of Windows laptops. And hopefully Apple does bring touchscreens to MacBooks. But then there's one other big sticking point that would ever make me choose the Surface Pro X over the MacBook Air. And that's what I alluded to in Microsoft Office. You see, ironically, in the past, I've found that there are a number of iPhone users that stick to iPhone because of iMessage. And I've always gotten frustrated about that, but then I realized that one of the reasons why I stick with Windows is because Microsoft Office on macOS devices, in my experience, is severely limited. And so, and so you can see Microsoft Office as the equivalent of iMessage for Windows. Of course, we can blame Microsoft for refusing to give feature parity to Office on macOS versus Office on Windows 10. But ironically, we can also blame Apple for refusing to make an iMessage service for Android devices. I can say with some confidence that there are a large number of businesses that will no time soon switch over to macOS because they're heavily dependent on Windows 10 and Office products on Windows 10. And so it's very likely that Microsoft and its partners will continue to sell massive amounts of Windows 10 devices. But that still leaves a very big question for Microsoft and its partners, because lifetime Windows users, like me, are considering switching over to the MacBook Air because of how compelling it is. And so it is up to Microsoft and its partners to answer this. And I would love to see Microsoft go all in on Windows on ARM and get its partners to manufacture very high-end compelling devices that directly compete with the MacBook Air. Now, frankly, I think those devices will not come anytime soon. Based on my experience with the Surface Pro X and several of the other Windows 10 on ARM devices, I think there's probably several years before Windows 10 on ARM starts catching up to macOS Apple Silicon in terms of performance. But keep in mind, Microsoft and its partners aren't 100% dependent on the performance of Windows 10 on ARM. And they always have Intel and AMD to drive the market forward in terms of processor performance. Now at this point, it's not 100% clear that Apple Silicon is universally better than x86 based processors made by Intel and AMD because we have yet to see any higher end processors from Apple. Once we start seeing those, we might actually see the performance difference. Now obviously, Apple Silicon on a performance per watt basis is, significant, is significantly better than x86 based processors, but we'll have to see if Intel and AMD continue to innovate to make their processors compelling because they will be fighting to do so. Oh, and how can I forget? The Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Fold is the first foldable screen laptop. 
what should be a massive innovation when it comes to what we think about a traditional clamshell device. Just like with phones, it's very likely that Apple is going to be late to the game when it comes to folding screen laptops. So we'll be able to see in the next couple of years whether people prefer the price to performance of the MacBook Air versus some weird, wacky designs coming out of PC manufacturers like Lenovo. Hey y'all, quick edit. So I was finishing up the editing of this video on my MacBook Air and I realized that I forgot one big thing. Like all the Surface Pros before it, the Surface Pro X is a detachable tablet or a two-in-one device. And I don't think I really gave the Surface Pro X enough credit for that in the video. I didn't really talk about it too much. And I think there's a reason for that. But first, let me just say that having a two-in-one device enables a lot of things that you can't do on a traditional clamshell laptop. Maybe you're a photo editor and you want to have very detailed edits with a pin on the screen, or maybe you're an artist and you want, to, you want to draw or paint on the screen, or maybe you want to take notes in class and you know the keyboard isn't enough so you actually have to draw illustrations or tables or anything like that. All of those things are a lot more difficult to do on the MacBook Air, or maybe even impossible without expensive accessories. And so the Surface Pro X actually covers those gaps. Most of this video might have been a little bit more focused on traditional computing that would naturally be easier to do on a clamshell laptop versus a two-in-one. And so maybe that gave the MacBook Air a leg up. Now, I count myself very lucky the fact that I can have the MacBook Air and then more traditional iPads or tablets that could cover that gap for me. I think there's gonna be a lot of people who are looking for a single device to do everything for them. And so the Surface Pro X might make more sense because it has the convertible uh, capabilities where the MacBook Air does not. Now, I don't think this is going to change my final opinion, but it's something to keep in mind as you watch the rest of this video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Now back to the matter at hand, the MacBook Air versus the Surface Pro X. You see, personally, I would choose the MacBook Air any day, not only because of its better performance, but because the additional capabilities it has because of that better performance, like being able to edit video. You see, I have several other Windows devices that I'm perfectly comfortable using for Office products. And so the Surface Pro X really doesn't fill any gaps that I need, whereas the MacBook Air could substantially replace some of those other products which is very, very compelling for me. In my full review of the MacBook Air, I will discuss whether I decide to keep it and what devices it replaces. So be sure to get subscribed to see that. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the Surface Pro X versus MacBook Air, because I think it's a really interesting comparison. I'll catch you in the next one.